Rick Buckler. Yeah. We, we, we only our paths only cross every uh, every so yeah, yeah. eight or nine years. Um, Gary Bushell, an old friend of ours, has sent me some questions to ask you. So um, I don't know if you can rattle for them very quickly. All good. Um, Thirty-five years ago, since all mud comes, uh, which, which Gary Bushell that's it, says is was more important than the Quadrophenia film, which I hated. Uh, in creating the mod revival, uh, how would you f- where do you stand on that? I don't know. I mean, at the time, um, it wasn't it wasn't really a sort of revival. These were just their fans, you know, like the, yeah, because uh, we were months before. Yeah, I mean, um, I, yeah, because the, the the mod fashion thing, it, it's never really died. It's never really faded away. It's it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's always there. Yeah, and, 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 and that's right. And so. Um, I don't know whether it was a revival at the time. We didn't think of it necessarily no. as that. Um, I mean, there was there was the sort of speculation that you know, Quadrophenia would probably have never been made if it had it not been for the fact that that you know the jam was still carrying that flag. I suppose. Yeah, that's, um, but that's what he's, he's going on about here. It's mm. like, how did you did you feel like you were spearheading the movement? Did, did, I think in retrospect, it's easy to. To, to say that, no, but yeah, I would have, but I don't think. Uh, um, I mean, they, they were just, we were just doing what we did, and and, um, and these were our fans, and this is the way that, that we dressed, and, and that was that was it was as simple as that, really. I think. Yeah, yeah. well, it was it was a very dedicated fan base. Mm. Right? It was, yeah, you know, well, we, we were it, very it close. Certainly rivaled the Clash. Yeah, well, we were very close to the fans, and you know, we would let them in for the sound checks, and, um, and we would meet with them, and you know, there, there was. No real them and us. I mean, it was you know we mm. belonged to, to the fans as much as you know they belonged to us, and, mm. and I think that that still carries through us. You still find you know jam fans reflect upon that with great fondness, really. And I yeah. and, and uh, you know it, it was when I got involved with uh, um, revisiting the jam songs, you know, with with the gift, um, I sort of rediscovered that myself, um, mm. which was really you know it was great to sort of. Um, you know, to find that was still there, and, and the, you know, people still you didn't play for a while, did you? Yeah. No, I, I stopped for a while. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know what happened there, really. I mean, I, I, I only intended to sort of get out of the music industry for for a couple of years or something. Is that just just did it feel? Bit well, of I, yeah, the eighties were really strange oh, because horrible, it was horrible, yeah. yeah, it just wasn't really. I just couldn't get anything together at all as far as what I really wanted to do. So I thought what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll indulge myself with um, doing something completely different. Cooking? <laughs> no, it wasn't cooking, it was cabinet making. But, uh, oh yes, it was, it was, it was. Yeah, it wasn't cooking. No, no, you don't want to taste my cooking. One thing I read about the other day is, is there a monument of some sort in Wokefield to the Jam? Yeah, there is. There is, yeah, really? yeah, really? yeah. yeah. Um, Barrett Homes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know they put it up. With all the work you put in. Yeah, they built this huge block of flats, and uh, uh, that's a big complex in, in Woking. And um, they commissioned an artist to, you know, to. Uh, what did he do? Uh, basically, he cut down three huge oak trees that were over two hundred years old, and <laughs> uh, yeah, um, and then chainsawed them all up to as a sculpture. Um, and it's like the tum-tum pole. sort of, but there's three of them. There's three poles, and they're massive. I mean, they, I think collectively they weigh about seven and a half tons or something. Right. Um, and uh, it's, the, the, I think, the theme behind it is the space within. I think that was what it. That's that's. I'm all artistic. What do I know about art? You know. Um, that's what it's called. Uh, well, that's the sort of theme behind it. But it's you know the. Uh, of, because he did quite a nice thing. He he went to the local school kids, and he said to them, um, you know, he went to the like Shearwater School and a few other sc- schools around the Woking area, yeah. and all the kids came up with loads of ideas. They, he, did they know who you were? Uh, yeah, I think they did. Yeah, um, you know, they'd obviously heard Paul Weller and the Jam, and and they knew who? some of the songs. Yeah, Paul who? <laughs> um, uh, so they they knew some uh, of that sort of thing. So he gave them a few lyrics and said, well. Look, be inspired by the songs and the lyrics and come up with some ideas. And then the best of those ideas, he then honed down to this, um, these three poles, basically. Um, 
But the gesture is lovely, you know, despite what you might think of it as an No, I'm not allowed to see it. No, yeah, I, no, you I, I only read about it and I just thought, is, mm. is, are you just being flippant that there's that, that stuck three poles in the ground? Well, it's not just three poles. I mean, it, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, like I say, what do I know about art? But I mean, that they are uh, three oak trees that have been carved and they stand quite close to each other. And they're, I don't know, so 20, 20 feet that, tall right. or something. And, um, they stand right in the middle of this courtyard of, of, of these flats, so they're viewed not only from the ground but but from above as well. And That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, nice. It's a nice gesture that they've done it.